Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Top Tips from Galaxy Australia. In this session, the Galaxy Australia team will share their top tips for using Galaxy Australia and make sure you can get the most out of it to get your research done. Today's top tips are going to be shared by Dr. Igor McCoonan, and he's sharing top tips for what to do when things go wrong. Igor is support officer at Galaxy Australia, so if you've ever submitted a help ticket and you have had something go wrong, Igor is probably the person who fixed it for you. Igor has a PhD in molecular biology and experience across comparative genomics, high throughput sequencing and command line interfaces. With that introduction over, I'll hand straight over to you, Igor, to give us a demonstration of what to do when things go wrong. Thank you for the nice introduction. Today, we will talk about failed jobs and related issues. Why it is important? Um, all users, both new and experienced users, will experience a failed job at some point. You come across a failed job at some point. It's just basically a matter of time. So we need to know what to do in this situation. Another thing is that while the completed jobs are more or less similar, people, people submit uh, input files and they go to results and they're generally happy, uh, the failed jobs are quite diverse. They are different because the jobs can fail for different reasons. Because of this, in, in the talk, we will cover recommended approaches and steps that users can take to figure out what's went wrong. So we will not talk about common errors, but we will talk approaches to resolve the situation. In Galaxy, many failing jobs are marked in red. So it means a job failed, but we want to know why it's failed. So the first step, we need to find an information, why it's failed. Galaxy records this information in several places. If we click on output of a failed job, we see a tiny bit of a preview here with scroll down menu. And if we pull it down, we'll see a message in this case, your file is probably truncated. So this is a one place to find an information. And because we are after information, there is an info button. It's like a round disk with I. So if we click on it, we see an information in the middle window. There's a lot of it. We are after the standard output and a standard error log file. The information of this log file is present in black boxes. The black boxes can be expanded by clicking on these double arrows. And once expanded, the direction of errors changed. Again, as you see here, there's a the message. Your file is probably truncated. Okay. And then um, often in software, the error is called bug. So you see this tiny bug, a little bit beetle, a little bit bug icon. If you click on this icon, we'll see another error message. Um, not all tools are the same in Galaxy. Some tools write messages in all these places. Some tools write in some places. Some tools write different messages in different places. But if you look in these three, three areas, you probably can find something uh, useful. So we, we got a message, but what if the message is unclear or it's written for by computer people for computer people. So we need to find the meaning of the message. So we want to find out what it means in plain tech, uh, in plain language. So how we do this is again, multiple approaches, but what you can do, uh, what people can do, they can select the message and go to Galaxy top menu and the help section and go to Galaxy help. This will open a link to Galaxy Community Help Forum. Galaxy platform has tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, active users. And 
we hope that someone else already experienced similar issue. So there is a search option. I already searched this message. And as you see, there are messages of ASCII-C. And if you click on it, you will see not just the description of an error, but also a proposed, uh, proposed solution for this message. Uh, if you got an error, uh, please search Galaxy Community Help Forum. If it's not there, uh, you can post the, the, the question on Galaxy Com Community Help Forum. But I recommend to check the, the, the message before posting. We can divide failed jobs in broadly in two groups. Uh, and the one group we can put failed jobs uh, and errors caused by data sets or conflicting settings or um, other things that are under user control. That means that users can resolve those errors on their own. Once they figured out what's going on, like in this case, file is truncated. So we need an uh, intact file for this question. Another group of error include jobs that would fail because of server-related issues. For example, incorrect installation of the software or missing something on a server. So users cannot resolve this type of errors. For these errors, users need to notify the uh, support team of a server where the job failed. How we do this? If we click on a Galaxy error icon and we scroll down, we see a tiny window where, where user can write a description of failed job. For example, I'm doing a training and my job failed here, or I do something and hit report. Once I hit report, Galaxy will send a message to a support team. Keep in mind that this message will go to the support team of a Galaxy server you work on. Uh, so what if you experience other issues? For example, uh, like here, uh, we have a completed job, fast QC job, but if we click on it, we see there is no data at all. Well, everything is marked in green, everything is perfect. It's just there is no data. So it's Perfect case, good report, but no data. And there is no error icon. So you cannot reach a, a server with the job. Another situation, a, a user cannot submit a job because something is missing. Right? So the, the server doesn't submit the job. In this case, you can go, a user can go to help, to support, and we click on support on Galaxy, uh, on Galaxy Australia, you see several options, including request support. So it's possible to contact support team even without a failed job. Sometimes it's very difficult to figure out if the error is caused by data or user uh, or uh, of a server related. We recommend several steps in this situation. First, you, it's, uh, people can test a tool. Now, to test a tool, we need a test data. So how we can get a test data? There are several options available. If we click it on on a failed job, we see a job setup. We scroll down to the bottom of a job setup page, and we see, very often we'll see a tutorial section. FastQC is a very popular tool. And it's used in multiple tutorials. So, uh, for example, if I click on introduction, there's tutorial for introduction. I already opened this tutorial. So, um, Galaxy tutorials have a tiny, tiny files, and the tutorials are tested by Galaxy people. So, you can copy this URL by clicking on the link, go to Galaxy, click on upload menu switch to paste fetch data, paste the link, 
and click start. So you will get a test data and you can try the tool, preferably with default settings, with this small data set. But or what if your tool is used somewhere downstream in a tutorial, say 20 steps, and it will take you two hours to go to this step. There's another option. It's a little bit complicated, but in, uh, it's possible to get data provided by people who adapted the tool for Galaxy. So if we go on job setup page, if we go to options, a small triangle icon on the top of the middle window, and there's a link to a tool shed. Tool shed is a repository for Galaxy tools. It looks like this. And the tool shed has a link to a GitHub repository. GitHub is a place where IT people keep software, there's like what is things. And Practically, this is a, 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 a link, uh, this is a page for FastQC and Galaxy. And then you can see that it has a folder or directory with test data. So you can, people can go in this directory, copy a URL to a test file, go back to Galaxy, paste it in upload window, uh, get fetch data tab, and import it. Uh, sometimes it's complicated, sometimes it's not very complicated, but those options are available. Another thing that uh, sometimes the latest tools are not installed properly. While people uh, support team always run tests, some failed installation may avoid the test. So what is recommended, you can test an early version of a tool. To do this again, during the job setup page, you click on the version icon, which is three blocks, and you can select an early version of a tool available on the server. Another option is to try this tool on other public Galaxy server. It's okay to have account on different Galaxy servers, but only one account per server. This is all topics that we want to cover today. And just to sum up, don't be scared if you see a failed job. Find out what is an error message. So look on those places we discussed today. If the message is unclear, go to Galaxy Community Help Forum and try to figure out the meaning of the message. If the error is user related or can be fixed by a user, follow the instruction from Galaxy Community Help Forum. That's it. And remember, the help is available for you. Uh, it's uh, over and it's time for questions. Thanks very much, Igor. That was an awesome overview of all the ways you can figure out what to do when things have gone wrong. And I love the message, don't be afraid. I think that's really important. It's it's normal for things to go wrong in bioinformatics and figuring it out is a, is a legitimate part of the data analysis process. So I was wondering, who are the wonderful people that are answering all of these questions on the Galaxy Help Forum? Well, it's actually it's a community forum, so um, everyone can answer the questions. Uh, many questions are answered by Galaxy team, especially server related questions. Um, there's some requests for tool installation or changes in the tool. But members of a community, everyone are welcome to contribute to the common body of knowledge. That's great. So if you see something that you've fixed before yourself, you, you're most welcome to, to throw in your, your solution as well. Yeah. Uh, answering uh, questions is actually a good way to learn something because you can formulate the answer and you can learn something new when you answer the question. Fantastic. So when you were talking about testing tools, can you do the same approach uh, for your workflows and test out a workflow on a small set of data? Yes. So, uh, yes, what we recommend, uh, uh, what, uh, the, the best practice for 
data analysis would be to test new tools and new okay, analysis on small set of data. Uh, this is both true for separate tools and a workflow. And uh, why small data sets? Uh, some, if you work with a big data, say 50 gig file, it may take hours just to map the data and you will wait for this time. So you can, while if you use a tiny data set, it can be tutorial data, it can be a fraction of your data, just select a certain number of first lines from your FASTQ file and your job will complete in minutes. So you will get the results and you'll test all steps. Once you tested your tools or workflow, you can either use your own and submit multiple jobs. Uh, the same you can submit workflow on multiple data sets. Right. Thank you. Well, it remains to thank Igor for sharing your top tips for what to do when things go wrong. And the, the number one message being don't panic. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and the next top tip session will be again at next, next Wednesday and where we'll have Dr. Anna Syme sharing top tips for managing, managing your data analysis with workflows. I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much.